Hello class, um, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this is lesson four, part one. There will be a part two, um, but this one focuses on the surface area of right pyramids. Um, we're going to learn some definitions, uh, some terms that we need to know so that we can talk about uh, right pyramids and what they are very easily uh, so that we all understand each other when we uh, use these different terms. Um, so let's get started. You can see below me, uh, this is 1.4, surface area of right pyramids. So these are some common features of a right pyramid. Uh, it has a polygon base, which just means that its shape, its base is a shape. It's not random. It's like a triangle or um, a square or a pentagon or a hexagon or any actual shape. Uh, it has triangular fe uh, faces that meet at the apex. So uh, the top is the apex, and then each of the sides is known as a face. And if you add up all the faces, that's something called the lateral area, which we will get into a little bit later. The apex has to be directly above the center of the base for this to be a right triangle, because what this or a right pyramid, because it has to the line has to make a right angle with the base. So um, the height of the pyramid is the distance from the apex to the base. Um, let's see. A regular right pyramid has a regular base, or all the edges of the base are the same length. Um, they're triangular faces that are the same. Uh, so examples could be triangle, square, pentagon, hexagon, as I mentioned below, or above. Um, examples of these regular right pyramids as shown here. Um, so that's what the triangle one would look like on the left, the square, and the pentagon. Now, there's one more term that you can see added to the bottom. Uh, it is the slant height. So the slant height is unique because it is the height of the triangle face. It is not the height of the pyramid. And when we're calculating the surface area, that is the height that we actually need to use. Using the height of the pyramid is not going to allow us to calculate the surface area because it is not on the surface of the pyramid. We are going to need to use Pythagorean's theorem, which you should have learned last year. Uh, if not, check out a video um, to find out what the slant height will be. Um, so let's jump into some problems. I'll give you some formulas um, and this would be a good time actually to let you know that you should be making a formula sheet. So I'm going to give you some formulas here. I would encourage you to start writing them down in a way that makes sense to you because there are going to be a lot and we are going to combine some of these formulas for different shapes. And if you make your own um, formula sheet, it will be very, very helpful for you. And I would suggest making it um, useful all the way through um, to the end of the course, as you can use uh, your own formula sheet on your tests. I'll obviously take a peek at them to make sure that there's nothing um, illicit on them, but you can use them uh, as we go through. So let's just jump into um, these formulas, and then we'll jump into a question. So the surface area of a right pyramid is going to be adding up the area of the base, which is on the bottom, and then the lateral area, which is all of the triangles that go up to make the pyramid. Um, the area of the base, depending on its shape, um, varies, right? It might be the uh, formula for a triangle, a square, might be for a pentagon, um, but we need to find out the area of the base. So the area of a triangle, as you can see given, is a half times the base times the height. Now, this is the height of the triangle. This is not the height of the pyramid. So we're talking about the slant height. And we use the Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, to find out what the height, uh, the slant height will be. Let's start with this one. Um, so they are, this is going to, a tetrahedron has four equal sides. Um, they're all triangles. Um, so four sides in this triangle, we're determining the safe, the surface area here. So it gives us the slant height already. It doesn't worry about the height of the triangle, which is nice. And we also have the base area, 
which is five meters. Um, so we can add that. Uh, we've got um, the area of a triangle is equal to a half times the base times the height. And we know the base is given as five uh, meters and the slant height is given as 4.3 meters. Everything is given to us. Um, so let's plug that in. Uh, the area of one triangle is going to be a half times five times 4.3. If we do that, um, the area of that triangle is 10.75 meters squared. Now that is the area of one triangle, but we have four of them, three sides in the bottom. So we are then going to multiply 10.75 by four to get a total of 43 meters squared for the triangle, uh, for the tetrahedron. So that would be your answer, 43 meters squared. We took the surface area of each of the sides, we added them all up, or in this case, we multiplied them since they were all the same. Um, let's do a little bit more complex example. Uh, a right regular pyramid has base dimensions of 6 meters by 6 meters and has a height of 4 meters. Calculate the surface area. So you already have it drawn, but I'm going to attempt to draw it. Um, this never goes well, but we will give it a go anyway. Hey, not too bad overall. So it says that it has base dimensions of 6 meters. So 6 meters and 6 meters are the base dimensions. And I know it's hard to see in here, but this is going to be the height of the pyramid going from the apex to the middle. It tells us that it has a height of four meters. So um, we are now going to need to calculate the slant height because we don't have the slant height that we need to calculate the areas of those triangles. We do have everything we need though. Um, the distance from this center point to the side is going to be half of the base. So half of the base, half of six is three meters. And we now have a right angle here that we can use to find out the hypotenuse of that triangle, which is the slant height. So um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared is our formula and what we're going to be finding out all the time is c that's what we want to know that is the slant height c is the slant height so that is what we are looking up so we are going to use the values three and four the other parts of our triangle to determine what c will be and that will give us our slant height so C is going to be equal to the root of these two things added together, the root of A squared plus B squared. So that's rearranging um, this formula for C, just taking the square root of both sides. So C is equal to A squared plus B squared. So that's equal to the root of four squared plus three squared, the other two parts of the triangle. So that gets us five meters for a slant height. We can now uh, take the slant height, the base, uh, and find out the area of the four triangles and add it to the base of the pyramid to find out the total surface area. So the surface area is going to be equal to four areas of the triangle, because we've got four sides, plus the area of the base. Um, that will be four. The area of a triangle, the formula is a half times base times height, so a half. The base is six. The height, which is the slant height we just found out, is five. So we've got four of those. It's all good. Plus the base, we know, is six by six. You calculate the area of a square by multiplying the two sides. So we get those together. That's 60 plus 36 
So the answer is 96 meters squared. Now the units are important because we're in meters and area is always um, discussed in squared units. Um, so there you have it. You are taking the height of the pyramid and the base and you are using what you know to find out the slant height of the triangles um, and then you're finding out the surface area from there. I'm going to take this page off as well. It's all dotted. There we go. Okay, let's move on to the next question. And then after that, there is a try it on your own to see if we're getting it. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay, we can't get all of it for now. That's okay. A right rectangular pyramid has base dimensions 10 feet by 8 feet and a height of 16 feet. So we have different side lengths. This is not uh, a regular pyramid. This is just a right pyramid. So it has two different slant heights that we're going to need to calculate. And sometimes these can get a little bit difficult to keep track of. Um, so you have the diagram that is written there, uh, drawn there for you. I am not going to attempt to draw it again since it is given. So um, the first thing that we need to do is find out the two different slant heights. So uh, we know that the slant height one is going to be equal to C, which is A squared plus B squared all square rooted. Right? That is going to be the same for the other, but I want to keep them straight at first. Um, first numbers that we're going to be using is 16 um, feet for the height. That is going to be the same for both. But um, the first um, slant height, we are going to use the 8-foot side. So the 8-foot side is actually, it's only half that distance into the middle. So it's going to be 4 feet for our other portion. Half of 8 is 4 because um, we're going from the middle to the side. So these two numbers are going to get placed into our formula. So that means the slant height of the first side is equal to 16 squared plus 4 squared, then square rooted. So if we punch that into our calculator, 16 squared equals plus, well, 4 squared is 16, so you add 16 to that, then you square root it all. We get 16.5 feet for the slant height one. We're gonna do the same thing for slant height two. That's equal to a squared plus b squared, but instead we are using 16 feet again because of the height, we're gonna use half of 10 because we're using a different, we're, we're calculating different sides. So instead of all four sides being the same, there's two sides that are the same here and two sides that are the same here. So we're going to use five feet which is half of 10 to plug into our formulas. So S2 is equal to the root of 16 feet squared again, plus instead of four, we're going with five feet. So 16 squared plus five squared, I wrote feet there instead of squared, that's okay. All square rooted gets us 16.76 feet. So now we have all the values that we need to calculate the surface area of this pyramid. It is going to be these two sides plus these two sides plus the bottom. So let's write out our formula. The surface area is going to be equal to 2 times the area of triangle 1 plus 2 times the area of triangle 2 plus the area of the base. Okay. So we need to make sure that we're keeping these slant heights um, straight in our mind when we are plugging them into these formulas. So that is equal to 2, the area of a triangle is a half times the base. Now we are using um, the 8 foot side first as the base, which means that we need to use that particular slant height. Um, 
So I've actually mixed up the order here. So this is actually needing to be slant height. This is actually triangles two, because I'm gonna use slant height two for this one. It is 16.76 feet. And that is because that is the slant height that corresponds to that side. We can't use a slant height and a side that are not touching one another. You have to use the slant height and the side that are connected. So this is actually um, the area of triangle two. So I'm going to put the area of triangle one next. So I'll use 10 and its slant height, which is 16.5. And then we're gonna add the area of the base plus eight times 10. So the tricky part is getting the proper values for the um, base length to go with its slant height. We need to um, really think about which ones we're using. Um, so it's often going to be the number, uh, the slant height that you found with the opposite of the base, uh, the base that you're not using in that um, question. So um, we, we'll do the math on these. You can punch that into your calculator, add that all up. So two times a half, that's just one. So these are actually all gonna be able to cancel out. We don't actually need to punch that into our calculator at all. That's kind of cool. So this is 134 feet plus 10 times 16.5. We can do that in our head, right? That's 165 feet. Eight times 10, we can do that in our head. That's 80 feet. And then we're gonna add that all up um, for a total of 379 feet. Now, I should have been writing feet squared, feet squared, feet squared. Final answer is 379 feet squared. It is, important, it is important when we talk about area that we keep our unit squared uh, and we write the final answer um, like that with our unit. The next portion is a try it on your own. Yes. So you're going to need to sketch that triangle um, and find the surface area. I would recommend that you pause it now and unpause it when you're done and you can follow along to see if you got your work correct. Um, so pause it now. Okay, we're back. Um, let's do the problem. So a rectangular pyramid has base dimensions five inches by nine inches and a height of 14. We're gonna sketch a diagram of the pyramid and calculate the surface area of the pyramid. So I'm gonna draw this um, hopefully better than the last one. It's a rectangle and it tells us that we have five inches for one side and nine inches for the other and they all meet at an apex that is directly above the center. It tells us that it is a height of 14 inches. Okay, so we know that we are also going to have distances from this side to this side and this side to this side. We can already write in actually what they are. So the distance from the center to this side is going to be half of nine. That's 4.5 inches. And the distance from the center to this side is gonna be half of five. That's 2.5 inches. So we can use the values given here and here and the height to use the, and use the Pythagorean theorem to find out our two slant heights. So slant height one is going to be equal to the root of 14 squared plus, uh, let's see, 4.5 squared. And that gets us 14.7 inches for the first slant height. Okay, let's draw that into which one it would be. So that is going to be, it's hard to see actually because it's going to be the one that's facing us. So that, that is the face that is in the front and on the back. Um, is that correct? 
No, these are the ones that are on the sides, the two sides. See, that can get confusing sometimes, but which ones they are. But this value, 14.7 inches, is going to be on this edge. I'll draw it in in black. It is this slant height from the apex to the middle of that base. That one is 14.7 inches. Okay. The next one we're going to calculate is going to be, I'm drawing it in black right along here, but it goes to this base, the bottom. So let's find out what that one would be. That's S2. S2 is equal to the root, the height is still 14, that doesn't change. So 14 squared plus 2.5 squared, punch that into our calculators, we get 14.2 inches. So the front and the back slant height is 14.2 inches. So now we can use all the values that we've collected, uh, the slant heights, the base, air, the base uh, dimensions, um, and the number of each to calculate what the total surface area would be. So the surface area is going to be equal to 2 times the area of triangle 1 plus 2 times the area of triangle 2 plus the base area. So let's move this up so we can see. So that is going to be 2. The area of a triangle is a half times okay, the base of triangle 1. So the base is given as 5. Triangle 1, remember, because that was S1, so this is 5. And then we're going to use the slant height of 14.7. We are then going to add 2 times the area of a triangle, so it's a half times, this is the base with 9. And we're going to use its slant height, which was 14.2, from the middle of the 9 side up to the apex, 14.2 inches. Then we're going to add the base area, 5 times 9. So then we're going to do the math and add them all up. So 2 times a half, again, is just 1. We don't need to do that. So we can just do 5 times 14.7, that is 73.5 inches, plus 9 times 14.2, 127.8 inches, and 9 times 5 is 45 inches. We add those all together, we get a surface area of 246.3 inches. And just like that, we are done. So there's a lot of work to some of these, but it is always the same. Find the slant height um, using the base and air, the base sides and the height of the actual pyramid. Um, write out your formula and plug in your numbers, and then you just have to punch it all into your calculator. Uh, yeah, uh, I'll see you soon uh, with the next lesson. Lesson 4, Part 2.